All right, I appreciate you guys joining me here at HNOC Studios here in the city of Plano, Texas, right about 11 uh, p.m. Uh, here in the city of Plano, Texas. And that's going to be Central Standard Time. A lot of times I record late because a lot of my good friends over in the uh, different uh, foreign country areas, um, they're asking me for Bible studies, and they're up about this time of the night if they're not going into their morning service. As so here, uh, we're about to lay it down. And get ourselves a good night to rest, but you know, someone's got to keep pushing the word to the point that it's going to be relevant to the ears of those who have an ear to hear. You know, they got a lot of great work going out there in their countries, also. And so, I try to be much of a help as I can to try to give them some solid information that's come from the kingdom of God. I hope the revelation will sink in and they can give their people solid information uh, as God brings forth the word. Give me a few minutes, I'm gonna let the word solidify itself here just a minute. And we're gonna come back, we're gonna pray, and we're gonna move here what the word of God has to say that's coming from the kingdom of God. All right, Father God, we thank you. We bless you for this opportunity to come before your throne. As we get ready to go forth to hear what the word of God has to say that's coming from your kingdom, Father God, I ask you to speak to the mouth of this priest as he go forth. Let me be your conduit on this particular evening here at HNLC Studios here in the city of Plano, Texas. As I go forth and bring that what you have given me uh, for a time for your people that they may hear and see and engraft and learn that what uh, you have given to me to give unto them. In the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, Lord, we plead the blood. We just declare the word is to go forth. And we know it's a word that won't go void, but it's an accomplishing word. In your precious and powerful and mighty name, we pray, Lord. Amen. Let's look over the book of Romans. Go over the book of Romans. Let's look at Romans. We're going to go over the book of Colossians chapter 2 also. So we just got to catch that and kind of hold on to that uh, Colossians uh, chapter 2. As we got ourselves in position here at HNLC Studios in the book of Romans, and we're going to look at it in the King James Version. We're going to look at a couple of different versions. We're going to kind of break this up a little bit and just you know, get some real good understanding about this particular word, how the word of God decrees that, uh, you know, we got to be free from the indwelling sin. And all of us have something that's in us, according to Romans uh, 8 and 23. You know, we deal with it on a, on a daily basis to the point where we got to rise up every morning, you know, with the model prayer, believing. And the clans will go forth, you know, we'll put on our heads. That's our heads, which is not just Ephesians 6 and 10, but that's acknowledging the fact that God's the head of our life and he has to protect us during the course of time we go out through these particular days and we live this day to the fullest in the obedience to Christ where he wants us to be, that we won't fall into those condem condemnational, uh, condemnational things, excuse me, as we do sometimes. And sometimes we might, but at the same time, we've got to repent and ask God to forgive us and move forward. Uh, you just can't hang on to it and worry about it. You know, which gangs anxiety and all those different things that come and worry a lot of people. You just got to believe in God. Especially in the time we're living in as of right now, you know, it's kind of a kind of a controversial time right now. You know, the, the word love is not moving very well rapidly <clears throat> in the earth at this particular time. So we got to continue to display ourselves as man and woman of God to have love for each other as well as our brothers and sisters. You know, we talk about... The Word of God in the book of John thirteen thirty four, which is a great word, you know, which deals with the new covenant, and that's what we're supposed to be, you know, love them as He has loved you, in the same way they may know that we are His disciples. So we got to move forward in the book of Romans, uh, chapter eight. The Word of God said, "For thou is no more condemnation in those which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not at the flesh, but at the spirit." Now you go to the Amplified version; it's, it's in a similar way, but a little bit more detailed. He said, therefore, there is now no condemnation, no adjudging guilt or wrong for those who are in Christ Jesus, who live and walk not after the deceits of the flesh, 
but after the deceits of the spirit. Now, when you go to the book of Galatians, you know, we're going to move to the second verse here when I move forth. But in the book of Galatians, you turn to the book of Galatians. Galatians talks about a lot of those things. He talks about the deceits. Uh, we'll go to the book of Galatians. You go over to the book of Galatians and look at Galatians chapter 5. And Galatians talks about a whole lot of things and we, uh, we pull back. And we don't find ourselves walking according to uh, what it says in the area of uh, Galatians 5, 14, 15 to 16. Because in 14, it says, you know, the laws of the kingdom are all based on love. Now, those are the principles. When you get on down here in the book of Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23, it tells you those particular rudiments or those particular uh, fruits that we are supposed to walk in, or at least we're supposed to uh, uh, acknowledge or operate in as uh, receiving what we call our Proverbs 10 and 22, the blessings of the Lord. But it says in the book of uh, Galatians 5 and 14, he said, for all the laws uh, are fulfilled in one word, and that is love, that I love thy neighbor. Now that's John 13, 34 and 35. And we come back and look at that. But he also gives a process when we disobey 14, we fall into the rudiments order. Some of the things that these are 15, bite, kick, scratch, and devour. And be not you be consumed by one another. So those things are not supposed to be between us as men and men and women of God who represent the kingdom of God. But in the 16th verse, he kind of clears it all and say, but walk in the spirit that you might not fulfill the lust and the desires of the flesh. Look at what he's telling you. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. In the spirit against the flesh. Now he said this is contrary that one another, so that you do not what do the things you would. Now let's look at that in a different way. Let's go to the area of um let's look at something that we in that particular area of scripture when it says that I want to look at a different version and I wanna take time to just kind of do some little breaking up here. And I wanna look at it in the um I want to look at over here in the, uh, let's see, let's look at it in the Message Bible. Let's look at it in the Message Bible. Let's go on to the Message here. I want to look at this a little different. The Message Bible's got a lot of great things, the way it brings stuff. Uh, oh, just the Living Translation. Let's look at the Living Translation, but let's look at the Living Translation in the NTL version. We'll look at Galatians chapter 5, and we'll look at that particular area over in what it talks about in the area of the 16th verse. I said unto you, let the Holy Spirit lead you in each step. Now, this is very amazing when he said that the each and every step we take, meaning every move we make should be a calculated step on how we should uh, first, you know, put God in position. It's been our guard because we move on our own. It's the word of God say, lean not to your own, according to Proverbs 3 and 5, but acknowledge God in all his way and then your steps have been directed. So when he said that you should lead by every step, let God lead you every step. I mean, praying and asking God. As my mother always told me, pray before God. Pray in everywhere you go and everything you do. Pray. Let God give you your answer. Don't come to the point where you want to lean to what your understanding is. Well, that takes you back over to Matthew chapter 7. And it deals with the process of the wide path and the narrow path. I think it's Matthew seven fourteen to 15. He talks about, you know, don't go in the wide you know, that's the late, that's the way to lead to destruction, but the narrow, meaning that we got to take time, be patient, and pray. And this is a lot of things I'm teaching my young daughter about right now. She's so quick uh, to really want to run and do things, but it's nothing bad about that. She's a 13-year-old, and, then, you know, they just want to get things done, especially in this particular uh, millennium world that they say we live in, these new, um, as they call the new millenniums. Millennials, uh, and sometimes they say the GPs or whatever. But in it, in this particular scripture, it says that you will not please your look at your sinful old slaves. Now, what is old slaves? That's Romans uh, Romans eight and twenty three. Matter of fact, it does not Romans eight and twenty three, but it talks about it gives us distinctive ways to how we were, according to the Book of Ephesians. Ephesians said we were walking in the course of the world, you know, in past times. We did things that really opposes the will and the laws of God. We was having fun, fleshly fun. Some of us are still having fleshly, uh, fleshly fun and still ministering the word of God. But the word of God also talks about the process of a double-minded person. You know, if you just think that if I don't see you, God don't see you, well, I ain't the one that's going to judge you. God's got the one to judge you. But it says over here in the particular area, I've got it in 5, 16, uh, and the 17th verse uh, in this uh, living translation. Look what it said. The things are old selves we want to do against what the Holy Spirit wants. 
Notice what it says here in this living translation. The old, look here, the things our old slaves, that's the things, that's the thing we're slave to, the craving, the gratifications of the flesh, all that stuff we liked it. And if you go back over here, you'll go over to the area of this particular scripture, and you go back over to what we said in the book of Galatians um, chapter 5, and you look at Galatians chapter 5, it distinctly tells you that the things that still haunt me and you in our lives today as we move forth. This is one of the reasons we as man and woman, God has to pray constantly and understand and realize that in this life, you know, that's, you know, that the enemy is constantly coming at us, but the advocate, the Holy spirit, the one who gave us the opportunity to pray in the midst of all the kind of woes that we have, because it gives you distinctly word for word, how the things that each and every one of us have um, to deal with on a daily basis somewhere in our life, as it says over in the book of uh, Galatians 5, in that particular uh, 18 verse. He said, but, the, but, but if you are led of the Spirit, you're under the law. And it gives you a whole different rules of some of the things that one of us or some of us fall in on a daily basis. You know, we understand the Word of God said these things only come by fasting and praying. But the word of God makes it clear here. This is why we got to work out our own soul and salvation. Because we deal with these things. And when we get one rid of one, another one pop up. Because of the things we have to deal with on a daily basis. In terms of how we carry ourselves. And the functions we have to deal with in this infunctional, in this dysfunctional world. A dysfunctional world. With the attitudes, with the problems, with the evilness. With the, mean, with the meanness, the anger that's going on in the lives of people. He says over here in the particular area, the 18 verse, but if you're led of the, if you, if you're led of the spirit, you're not under the law and say the law is the works of the flesh, which manifests adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, adultery. Look here, adultery. It, it, it tells you, it gives you a capital adultery. Then it gives you idolatry, adultery and idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, Illuminations, look at it, wrath, strike, seditions, wow, heresies, envy. These are a lot of things that we as men and women of God has to deal with. Not all of them, but somewhere in our lives. Maybe your person has an attitude problem. You know, you, 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 something's coming out of you. You got anger that's in you. Some people deal with harass, you know, heresies, lying. Some people deal with strife. I don't like him. I don't like that person. Wrath, outbursts, you know, variance. These things that people deal with all over the world as in the church as well as outside the church. We are not free from everything. This is why the Holy Spirit has given us the, the blood of Jesus Christ to carry in our hearts. What the word of God said, we got a big old Jesus living inside of us for what he done on the cross. He died that we have the right to the tree of life. Now we go back to the book of Romans. You look at the book of Romans. You come on the book of Romans. Notice what he says over in that particular third verse. He said what the law could not do. Now he's talking about those things in the book of Galatians 5, 18, down that, through that 19, through that, really, tw that, that 20th verse. He's talking about all those things that we deal with, the gratifications of the flesh, because that was law. Because see, when we was in the law, we couldn't be healed. See, so we had to come to the point of surrendering. And our point of surrendering is coming to Christ. That's Romans 10, 8, 9, confessing and believing in our heart, knowing that God had raised his son from the dead. And then we come to the point of being saved. So the word of God makes it very clear in the third verse. For what the law could not do, the clear, it was weak through the flesh. That's your Ephesians. That's your, the matter of fact, your Ephesians, you know, Ephesians chapter two, that trust passes and sin things, the past time, the course, that course we used to walk. He comes down in that fourth verse, not kind of paraphrasing through there. He said, the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now you go to the book of Galatians, it tells you pretty much the same thing. You go to the book of Galatians chapter 5, it runs that same message down to you in the 16th verse. I say then, walk in the spirit that you should not fulfill, come on somebody, the lust of the flesh. 
because it declares that this thing has got a controversial problem in the 17th verse. And if you dwell outside the laws of the kingdom of God or the rules of the kingdom of God, this is where the word of God comes over in the book of Galatians 5 and 15. You be that person that bite, kick, and devour and deal with all those things from 18 down to 22 in your life. Murder, reverie, all that stuff. You know, it, it, It's hatred. All that stuff that's in you. It, it bottles up in you. When you can't release it off of you, it begins to lash out at people in all sorts of ways. It's amazing, man, and woman of God, because we don't get rid of things. See, this is what the Word of God says in Matthew, in the book of 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight. You got to examine yourself. You got to make sure you're putting out proper production, a proper productive words and information to be a kingdom representative. So it comes in the fourth verse, and he said, for the, he said that the righteousness of the law, look what he said, might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Okay, let's look at that in the Amplified Edition also over here. And it says in the fourth verse in the Amplified Division, in, in, uh, Amplified Division, excuse me. He said, for, he said, so the righteousness and just requirements of the law might be fulfilled. The just requirements. What is the just requirements? Walking upright, obey all the commands, all the statutes, and all your precepts. I talk about a good uh, rule to walk against when you understand that you're a man or woman of God, you walk in the kingdom of God. Look at Psalms 1. It tells you how you receive your Proverbs 10 and 21. That's the answer in Psalms 1. But in the midst of walking in Psalms 1, you got to believe there's nothing too hard for God to do, even though you may stumble in your uh, Psalms 1 walk. And lining up and trying to be that way as a blessed man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of the sinner. You got to understand that you're going to have some falls. And this is why the word of God tells you in Proverbs 3 to 5, when you're walking in the spirit, you can't lean to your own understanding. You got to acknowledge God. He will direct your path. He'll lead you into the right path in terms of where he wants you to go. So it comes back over here in the Amplified Edition in that area of the book of Romans uh, 8 and 4. Look what it said. So then righteous and just requirements of the law might be fulfilled, met in us who live, look here, and move not in the way of the flesh, we want to pull away from those things, that that gratification that makes us, that deed that make us look good. But he says right here, but in the way of the spirit, our lives governed, let me use that word, governed, not by the standards and according to the deceit of the flesh, but controlled by what? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, who resides in me and you. And got the ability to shut down every outside force that's not like God. Are y'all understand what I'm telling you here? Look what he says right here in this particular second verse. He say, but the mind. Now, when the word of God talks in this particular word in the sixth verse, I want to, I want to show you something here. I want you to get this sixth verse. I want you to mark it in your Bibles. When you're marking your Bibles, I want you to take your Bibles. And I want you to go over to the book of Romans. Um, I want you to go to the book of Romans uh, chapter 12 and let's listen to what the spirit is to get reverence. Not from education, but the revelation. This is not about an educational thing. This is moving and flowing in the spirit. If you don't understand it, you got a man-made religion and understand you're not going to get it because you're still holding back, trying to argue against the things that you feel is right from your own eyesight. And all I'm doing is teaching you through the spirit and what God is telling me to give to you in this particular time that we're teaching. Look what he's telling you over here in the sixth verse, Romans six. Look what he said, Romans eight and six. Look what he said for the kernel mind. Look what he says for the kernel mind is death, but the spiritual mind is life and peace. Look at it in the Amplified Version. Look what he says over here. He said, now the mind of the flesh, which is since is in reason without the Holy Spirit. Look at it. Which is since in reason without the Holy Spirit is death, death that comprises all the memories, the misery, excuse me, all the miseries arising from sin, all the miseries that arise from sin, both here and hereafter. But the mind of the Holy Spirit is life and soul peace, both now and forever. Let's look at something over in the book of Romans chapter 12. 
Yeah, let's look at Romans chapter 12 in the King James Version. Look what he says here. He says, I'm calling you earnestly. When Romans chapter 12, you go back to Romans chapter 12, you look at Romans uh, 10, 8, 9, it says a very strong requirement that it's really telling you, I'm calling you earnestly to get yourself together. The life that we're living and the life that's going on is not going to last too long for those who God has the number to call. So you got to get your gift together. You can't look at the outside world and say, this is what's going to happen. This will happen. God said, I'm just going to show you the times but your clock is you, you own the clock so you gotta make sure you get your work done and you gotta believe in the midst of getting your work done you follow christ the way he's telling you to follow him not because of what man says not because of what these men listen to me it's no longer listen to it's not no longer listen to a man but it's no longer listen to a woman but you gotta be able to dissect the word you gotta validate it to make sure it's good not something that's gonna make you feel good it sounds good by words or talk or performance you're gonna have to validate the word in terms of way God is getting you to understand it spiritually look what he says based on the fact that we just came off of that area over in the book of Romans chapter 8 and that's 6 and 7 look what he says over here let's go back to Romans chapter 8 once again I want to read this to you once again in the Amplified Version version in Romans 8 and 6. Now the mind of the flesh, which is senses in reason without the whole, is senses in reason without the Holy Spirit. Look at what he's telling you. It senses in reasons without the Holy Spirit. Now you know what that's that's Proverbs 3 and 5. You got your own way of doing things. And like he said over in the book of Matthew chapter 7 and at 14, 15 verse, it's a wild way. And it's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is a death. He said a wide path leads to destruction. We see that, but the narrow path leads you down the truth and brings you through the proper way you need to go that you may be that man or woman of God. He designed you to be in life. Now he says once again, now the mind of the flesh, which is, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. You can already feel right there when you try to do without God. And death, death that comprise all the miseries arising from sin, both here and hereafter. Now we know what happened to the rich man. He was he dealt with that thing all the same way he carried himself here on earth, he died that same way, burning in the fire, asking for a pardon to get out of it. No, you ain't getting out of here. You gonna burn. Look what he's telling you. But the mind of the Holy Spirit is life and soul look here, soul peace, both now and and forever. Look what he says back over here in the area of the book of Romans, chapter 12. He can, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. That means mercy. You know, you, you can. You, God said, Look, I don't care who you are, how much you done messed up. My mercy and grace is sufficient to cover everything that you may have gone through and had looked upon and people denounce you as being who you are. I still love you based on the fact what I told you over in the book of what Ephesians uh, chapter one and that fifth verse. I have predestined you. I've designed you. I've created you for my good will and my good purpose. Keep your mind right. Don't let people play with your head about this Christianity stuff in terms of what God is going to do. God ain't going to do. He loves you. You may not reach the plateau that most people do from an outer appearance, but you got to get your heart right. And God looks at the heart. Look what he says once again. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body, look at all the members, everything in your body, a living sacrifice Holy, look what it says. You got to be acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. That means I got to do the best I can from my point of view, and God will take the rest over. He says once again, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. Look what he says about that conform. You go back over here to the area of the book of uh, the book of Romans. You look at Romans um, chapter, uh, look at Romans chapter six. Look what it says for the kernel mind. See, when you kernel minded, 
You don't see the things the way God sees things. And the same thing he said in the Amplified Edition. When he said in that particular Amplified Edition, that sixth verse, he said, which is a sentence in reason, it reasons without the Holy Spirit. That's a kernel-minded individual. He think their own way. They lean not to their own, but they acknowledge. that. I mean, they lean to their own and don't acknowledge God in all their way. They think they got it all together. They think they so to a point that they feel that they got it all on point. They'll bamboozle you say all these things that make you feel good and all of a sudden they push the flush, bump the flush it ain't done nothing look what he tells you once again in this particular word when he goes back over here and tells you this word once again in the 6th verse he say but the kernel mind is death but the spiritual mind is life and peace that's the mind you want to have when you talk about any man that be in Christ Jesus he be a new creature What's passed away? All old things. And even if you don't conquer all the old things, the mercy and grace of God will help you get through them when you can't do it on your own. Look what he says in the seventh verse. But the carnal mind is empathy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Amplify this thing up and I got to get out of here. Look what he says. This is because the mind is the flush with its kernel thoughts in pur- look here in purpose it's hostile to god it does not submit itself to god's law indeed it cannot father god i thank you i bless you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth as you continue to touch us look over us keep us by your holy spirit father god even this day and time, Father God, as things are going on, Father God, you're yet being in control. And Father God, by you being in control, I just decree according to the Spirit that you go out and touch every man and woman and boy and child. Go into the household. Once the power of your Holy Spirit move and let it convict, let it arrest, let it shut down every negative thing that's not like you. Father God, we thank you for this time, this moment, and your presence and power for mighty name to all my good friends out there in India. All my good friends out there in Kenya, Sierra Leone, all across the different areas of the country, Mill, Japan, our new listeners out there coming out in Okinawa. We thank God for them. Laos, we love you. We thank you guys for joining us here at HNOC Studios. Don't forget about Neil, my Apostle Paul. Thank you, God, for being with that man of God. I tell you, he's a great man of God. I'm going to bless his ministry, bless him as he go forth, and all the other men and women of God as they go throughout all the villages in the foreign countries out there in those areas. Let the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit fall upon them every Friday financial need they need father god bring it forth because only you know what you can give them and what you have in store for them. father god I just decree the word i just declare the word over my family over all the families here in the states over our school systems over the presidency father god and all the elections that's going on in the name of jesus father god i ask you to be in control move by your authority by your power and by your grace look over all the officers look over the family the officer the man of god who's gunned down there in new york city such a young man who have a good outlook for the young people Father God I ask you to bless his family in such a way Father God that they will clearly know that you are God and beside you there's no other Father God I just bless you I thank you for all those who are out there roaming about be careful with the COVID in the name of Jesus keep them safe from all hurt harm and danger they may truly know that you're in control Father God we thank you in your precious and powerful name we pray Lord Amen